Les from Retired and Living the Dream. Today's video is going to be about are you ready to curl your toes up? Have you made all your plans and preparation if you turn your toes up in Thailand? And okay not many people have covered this but I think it's very very important. So I'm not giving the car a wash today, I'm going to give the motorbike a wash today. So it's not going to be as long of a video. So okay, right, are you ready to curl your toes up here in Thailand? Because at the end of the day, oh, I haven't turned my water on. Because at the end of the day, we're all going to die one day. And what type of things have you left your partner, your wife to deal with if you die? Now, how many people know what, this, what the procedure is for when you die? Um, is your wife, girlfriend covered? Is she going to get something out of it when you pass away? Or is she just going to end up with nothing? And I say this because there's a couple of people that I know who passed away recently and they thought their wives or girlfriends were going to get an inheritance or going to get the pension and sadly they ended up with nothing so now gone from a position where they were had a boyfriend or a husband who were going to make provisions for them when they pass over to actually having nothing and start all over again because their husbands wrongly thought that their wives and girlfriends were taken care of So, how would you feel being left in that situation? That you can't do nothing about it because you're, you're gone, you're toast, you're going to be burnt, you're going to be going to wherever you're going to go to. So, that's why it's important to make plans and provisions before you curl your toes up so you know what's going to happen. Now I've already done this, I get a, a private pension from my fire service career and what I've done is made provision so my wife knows exactly what she's going to get when I curl my toes up. Now there's a joke goes on in Thailand, don't tell your wife or girlfriend how much you're worth dead because they may claim the policy early. <laughs> But of course, if, if you even thought about that, about your wife or your girlfriend, you shouldn't be with them in the first place. So, um, because I'm married now to my wife, that makes things a little bit easier. Because um, certain things are already taken care of. Um, the fact that, did you know... Let, let, let's talk about the people who aren't married first on, and uh, how they have to deal with it or how your partner has to deal with it. So if you're an American, Australian or anybody else but Thai basically, the procedures are complicated and if you're not married to a Thai person then when you die you get took for a to the hospital, to the mortuary, wherever, and your body can't be released from the mortuary until your embassy gets a, a copy of the death certificate. And that has to be given to them by your next of kin. Now, if your next of kin, uh, obviously in Australia, England, or wherever, it's going to take time before all of that documentation gets sorted out and they give permission for the death certificate to be administered and then it has to be copied into English from Thai and then given to the embassies and you see already the complicated chain of events that's going to start so you can make provisions of all of this lot before you curl your toes up to make life a little bit easier for your partner and as I said the death certificate. They will only release you from the hospital once the uh, embassy has the death certificate. And they say that could take 
weeks, you know, maybe it's days, but uh, these are the things that you've got to be prepared for to, to make your partner's life a little bit easier when you're gone because you're not here to do any of this loss because you've gone to another place. And, uh, but if you're married to a Thai person, then life is a little bit easier as far as that's concerned, is that they can get uh, the death certificate because they, they are the next of kin by being married to you, but they still have to get it uh, translated into English. So again, that, that's just another step that they have to do that they have to get it translated to English before they can give it to the embassy, before the body can be released. But if you don't know that, then it just causes, causes problems. And let's face it, when somebody's died, you know, everything is a problem and everything is a stress and everything is, is worse, ten times worse, because dealing with emotions and the stress of it all isn't good. So that's the, if you die, and the ceremony goes on for four days to, before you get burnt. And uh, what about the cost of that? Some people are living here on a budget, and the, the cost of funerals and cremation can be up to, uh, well, starting from 50,000 baht, going up to, the prices skyrocket really, but let's face it, a normal one cremation is from 50 to about 100,000. Now when my wife's uncle died, we had quite a big celebration. And the celebrations here for, it's the uh, celebration of life, it isn't a, 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 like a wake or anything. And over here in Thailand, they're actually brilliant. I liked it. Okay, there's the sadness in it, but there's a celebration of life and much more of a joyous occasion than uh, funerals in England. And sadly, I had to go to my mother's funeral and comparing that to the um, funeral that my wife's cousin, uncle, some relation. It was a much more enjoyable event, if you can say enjoyable event, because you know, in any funeral, any death isn't joyous, but, but that situation was better. And uh, so now it comes on to the preparation of all the paperwork and things like that. Now what you can do, and this is what I've done, I'm not saying that everybody has to do this, but I just think when I've gone, she can't ask any questions. She can't say, well, Les, what about this, what about that, what about the other? Because I've gone. So the more you can do before this, the better it is. And what I did, I applied for all my pension paperwork to be sent to me. So I pre-filled it. And the only dates that they're putting on there now is the date of the death and... And then uh, the application be made, can be made. I filled all the paperwork out, my wife's address and bank details, etc, etc. Because she's Thai. And although she can speak perfect English, she, probably, she can't read English as good. She can talk to somebody on the phone, but when you don't know, you don't know. It, it just makes life more complicated. So by me filling all of this paperwork out, and then we've sat down together and gone through the paperwork, and she's wrote what needs to be done in, in her language, in Thai, so she has a better understanding. Now, does that sound macabre, or does it sound taking care of the person that you're with. So when you're gone, life is a little bit easier for her. I'd say I want to make my passing as easy as I can for her because at the end of the day, 
it's a sad time anyway. So, also, making her aware, because she's 27 years younger than me, making her aware of um, a proof of life, proof of life requests every now and then. And I know if I didn't tell her or inform her of this, and it's the same with you, with your pensions or whatever, invariably majority of guys, wives are substantially younger than them and they're going to live for a while. And what the insurance companies do, every now and then ask for a, a proof of life or a, a proof of circumstances. Has your circumstances changed? Have you got married? Are you still alive? Things like that. So what they will do, they will stop the payments until you prove what they're after. And the chances is that they won't send you a letter, they'll just stop the payments and let you get in contact with them. Or sometimes you might get a letter. But of course it's in English. And if you can't read English, you might just think, oh, it's just one of them things. But action needs to be taken. So I've told her, because I've contacted my pension, and I've asked them as to, you know, how long the payments are going to be. And they said it'll be paid to her as long as she's alive or until she remarries. So I've told my wife that if for any reason the payments stop, that she has to get in touch with the insurance providers. So I've given her all the telephone numbers, the contact details, my numbers, etc., etc. So one day when the money does stop, because they're just checking to see that circumstances are still the same, because if you don't tell your wife that, she may just think, oh, no, that's it, payments have stopped because he's died. I'm only getting paid for so long. So that's what I'm saying. You've got to take into consideration all of these things because we might just take it as normal. But if they don't understand our situation or our requirements, then they'll just let it stop and just thinking, oh, okay, that's it. You know, I don't get paid. Like you said, I'm going to get paid for the rest of my life. Insurances also. Um, they require the original copy of your marriage certificates and things like that. So when we got married, we had three copies made all at the same time. So the sort of three originals, and they were all translated into English because the insurance companies want the original documentation. So if, for instance, they're applying for my fire brigade pension, and she's also applying for my life insurance, they want the original. So that might take up to a month before any payments are made or the originals have sent back, and what if the originals get lost? So now she can apply for the pensions with three genuine copies from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So all the paperwork will get sent off at the same time. It's planning. You don't have to do it. Obviously, you don't have to do it. And there's a couple of guys I know in my mind, they're a bit selfish, like, well, when I've gone, that's it. But if you're a Thai partner, and you, she's given her time up to be with you, and I think it's a little bit selfish if you just turn around and say, well, when I've gone, that's it. There's no provisions for her, but she might think that there is provisions for her. So, but that's up to the individual. But this is just a short little video to say, this is what I've done for when I curl my toes up. I care for my wife, I love my wife, and I want her to be happy for the rest of her life. And financially wise, she is. You know, she's gonna be sorted for the rest of her life, and I'm happy at that. So that's the motorbike washed quicker than the car. Not a bad motorbike for eight years old, it's still going strong. Uh, it's done up just over 12,000 kilometers now. 
that's uh, lovely. So anyway, if you want to know any details, send me a message down below and if you've got any questions to ask, ask away and if I can answer them, I'll answer them. So from Lays Retired and Living the Dream, till the next one, bye for now.